here I am, uh, kind of start doing a walkthrough of this thing. I have spent the last half an hour getting it on four tires. As it turns out, these hubs, or these wheels, are basically five on five and a half. And it just so happened I had a set of spare scout rims. I had three of them um, sitting under my porch. So I was actually able to get this thing on three good wheels. There's one more wheel that needs to be done. Um, I'll have to see if I can get that mounted later. Anyway, this is what we're looking at outside. The front fender looks like it's okay. This one actually looks like it's in really nice shape um, up front. The eyebrow looks okay and the seam is fine here. It's got a good badge. Typical rot here. Um, underside, it feels good. I mean, the whole lip and everything feels good underneath. And I don't see anything on the underside here, which is nice. Um, front door, it looks like it's been hitting on this thing or there's something going on here. This, this front lip is messed up. Um, so this door will need some attention, clearly, and there's you know marks and stuff in it. The rockers are in decent shape. This side had actually a trim piece that got pulled off when the previous owner was yanking it out of the field or something. It's actually sitting in the back of the truck, but uh, it's bent all to hell and it's no good anymore. Um, this door I can't open. Um, and I've tried the catch on the inside and I can't get it to work. The trim looks really good. Um, and I mean, the whole door actually is in really nice shape. So um, this one and the other side looks like I've got a, a good set of spare rear doors, which is exactly what I wanted. Chrome is in great shape. This chrome, this has a couple of things in it back here, but this front chrome up here, this little piece here, and this are in good shape. This piece is actually sitting on the front seat, and this is in good shape, so that's nice. Um, moving to the back fender here, there's a bunch of kisses on the, the back fender, which have pushed out the crease, um, and it's pushed in here and there. This whole section underneath here has got some, some rod in it, and at some point they hit somebody and basically kicked open this part of the, uh, the tail here. This badge is in great shape, and again, the, the trim is good here. I haven't found this trim that goes around the back and around the back door yet, so I don't know what the story is there. I'll have to look for it and find out. Um, you can see underside, these rockers are in really rough shape. Um, compared to mine, they're in really bad shape. Um, which makes me feel pretty good about parting this thing out. Um, this thing will get crushed here. You just wait and see. Good glass, good glass, good glass, which is key. This is number one. Uh, this is the, the main thing here, so I'm going to take this out very carefully. Um, drip rail is actually in really nice shape, and you can see there's a really nice roof rack. I stuck a piece of wood up here, but there's actually a really cool bullet from the original piece here. Um, I wish it had both of those because that'd be worth something. That's really cool to have. Here's the back tailgate. Uh, some nice detail here. Triangle truck work, Cannon City, Colorado. I've got to look that up and see who that is and what that's all about. Um, bumpers in great shape. Looks like an old Mountain Dew uh, bumper sticker of some kind. Good tail lights, good plate lights. International badge is pretty rough, and um, I mean, there's a couple of dings in this bumper now that I look at it. There's one right there, but I mean, hell, it's something that I don't have already, which is great. Um, again, back tailgate's in pretty decent shape. Windows in good shape, and the surround is okay. I have to get in the back to see if I can get this down. I'm probably gonna have to take the back panel off to get in there, so we'll see how that goes later. Um, this taillight surround is pretty well crusty. The actual taillight's in decent shape. This one's actually in better shape. Um, looks pretty good. This side's got a kiss on it. Uh, the, the script is broken there, so that's a, you know, put that up on a wall or something like that. Um, this side has a lot of rot in it. You can see here, it's come all the way through and it's all the way up. And it feels like it's beginning to come through in the back here where this is, this is actually, um, welded, so I'll have to look at that. Again, you can see that channel is completely shot underneath there. Um, and there's some rot happening here as well. 
um, bump here, your usual dents and dings, but it's in actually pretty decent shape. This side has good trim all the way up. It's got the, the corner piece here and the, the thing, so uh, this trim looks like it's gonna come off pretty well, which is actually great. Another good window, so this is gonna get stored away. Um, there's a little bit of fog at the bottom here. Um, there's fog on both of them actually, but um, they're both in good shape for what they are, so they'll get taken out and stored. This door has a small crease on it here. It looks like somebody came along and, and creased it um, and then pushed this in, but that's nothing that some body filler couldn't get out, I don't think. Um, let's see, it's got the chrome on the bottom here that goes all the way up. That's got some, some dings and some dents to it too, but um, I'm gonna see if I can get that off and keep it in one piece for somebody. Uh, this door opens, but it's really tough to get open all the way, so I'm gonna have to hit it with some PB Blaster to get the hinges to come up, open all the way. Uh, and then this one opens up easily. And you can see in here, this is where the, the real horror story begins. Um, there's a lot of water has, has come in this thing. And I don't know from where, probably from the cowl vents. I haven't been underneath to look and see yet, but that'll be next. From what I'm told, this is an Arctic heater. It's not the regular heater. It's not the one that I have in my truck. It's actually a bit more, but it's in pretty rough shape. So I'll have to uh, see if I can get this thing out in one piece and figure out whether it's worth saving or not. I don't know yet. Um, I'll get to the inside in a minute. Let me finish up the, uh, the outside. Here. Front door, again, that same crease that hit, they must have hit like a fence post or something. Um, some bumps, some bruises, nothing too bad. Glass is in excellent shape. It's a really nice um, window here. This window looks good. Um, all the chrome is in good shape. So we're in good shape there. Dual tanks. This one's filled with some um, tin foil, which is kind of funny. Um, this fender has some dings to it. Um, and of course the rod at the bottom. And then there's a little bit more damage up here because it's the far corner. So. Um, this would actually be the third front fender that I've got. Uh, so I'll just, you know, store this. Decent badge, some trim. I don't know if I have the other side of this, I'll have to look for it. Looking up front here, this one also has some rust in the eyebrow. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer. Um, but again, I'll pull it off and see. Good headlight surrounds, good marker surrounds. This front fascia, I don't know yet. I'm gonna to try to get the whole thing off and see if I can repair it as a spare. I've also got to see if my grill will actually fit in this. So I'm gonna pull the uh, 67 grill out. Um, can obviously resell that and see if I can refinish this whole grill surround. And if I can use it for mine, it'll be my spare. This is where the worst of the rod is right here. So um, if anything, I'll probably, you know, if I can save this thing, I'll have to basically cut this and weld in new metal and weld in the eyebrows behind these things and clean that up. Really good bumper. There's only one crease in it here. Um, that can probably be pulled out, but I don't have... I've got a Ford, it's like a 57 Ford bumper. Um, that doesn't... I mean, it's, it's uh, not an international bumper. It looks really good and it's close to this, but it's not the same thing because um, my bumper is completely destroyed. This is in good shape, so I'm going to see if I can get this to work on mine, um, and then I'll figure out what to do with the Ford bumper. Um, this headlight surround has got a ding in it. Uh, it'll be nice to have some spare um, marker lights. I think I've got an extra set, but I'll have another extra set, which is really good. Looking in the engine, it's a V8 of some kind. Um, you can see somebody's been nesting in here. Set up for AC. Um, independent front suspension on this one, uh, which is very interesting. The inner quarters look like they're in good shape, both sides. I'm gonna have to pull this one out because it's got power brakes, but more importantly, power steering. And I'm gonna pull this entire set out and put it on mine. So all this bracketry, um, spare pulleys and everything, they're gonna come out and go on mine. Um, and that'll give me power steering. And then I'll pull this booster out, rebuild it, and put it in mine as well. Um, 
The hood's got this funky fuzz on it. Uh, I'm going to have to pull all that stuff out because I'll see if I can save the hood too. I mean, I'm going to try to save as much of this as I can. Cowl rust here. So I have a sneaking suspicion when I get into the cowl, I'm going to find that it's basically gone. And there's more over here as well. So, yeah, this thing needs a good clean before I even get started on it. Uh, V8, I don't know what size yet. Um, don't even know. If it turns over, I'm going to put a bar on it and see. Interestingly, it looks like... All right, so this has a slave cylinder just like mine. So I'm gonna see if I can figure out what makes this thing tick and how it gets into gear. And then I'll figure out how mine will get in gear because I'm still having a problem getting mine into gear. Well, that's kind of nice to have. To hang on to that. And I've got to save this too because I don't have one of those. Uh, I'll go into more detail on all this stuff later as I find out more, but this is just sort of the first peek at things. This is a custom model for 70 or for 67. So uh, it got these really nice Thor cards on all sides, which are actually still in here, but they're all in a pretty rough shape. Uh, custom steering wheel, custom dash, which has a couple of cracks in it, which is kind of a drag. It's been sitting out forever. Looks like it's all original gauges with a trailer brake. Um, what else can I show you? Uh, let's see, wiper th choke throttle. There is a spare fuel tank um, knob here, which is pretty cool. Original radio, which is gonna come out and go in mine. That's really cool. Um, I'm pretty psyched about that. And this has a lot of the creature comforts that mine did not come with, which include two, um, two of the visors. I don't have visors in mine. I actually bought a set of vi well, a visor, two visors. The driver's side is shot. The passenger side's in good shape. But this looks like it's even like super deluxe, um, which is pretty cool. These look like they might, oh no, those, I thought they might like expand or something, but they don't. Even so, that's pretty sweet. Um, really nice headliner, headliner bows. Now I've got a set of headliner bows and I was just gonna put plywood or something in mine. Um, I mean, it'd be really cool to find this kind of material again, but I don't know where I would find that or how I would get it. Um, but I can save all of that stuff, which is really cool. And I can also use this as a pattern to figure out how does mine work. The other thing this has that I don't have is this aluminum molding all the way around, which is what this stuff sits in. So it goes up and it, it presses in and it sits in this, and I don't have that. Uh, so I'll have to see if I can figure out how to get that to work for mine. Um, you can see back there it's got the rear light, uh, which is really cool. Mine doesn't have any of that stuff. I don't even have any lights in mine. Um, so what else? Four-speed stick. Same as mine. Feels really loose, actually. Um, interestingly, if I look at the brake pedals, there's absolutely no wear on any of these pedals. Um, so I don't even know. So this reads 90,604 miles. Um, I would bet that that's original. I would bet that that hasn't flipped. Just looking at these pedals. These pedals look like they're brand new. It's kind of crazy. Bench seats are pretty toasty. Uh, it's got this cool old truck stop cover, which is now disintegrating. Um, the rear seat, I can't even figure out what's going on with that. It's like sunk in there um, and it's in pretty bad shape. So I'll dive into that in a little bit and see if I can figure that out. Uh, you know, I have not actually even gotten into the glove compartment, so let's go around and check that out really quick. Oh, uh, two international hubcaps, um, you know, other trash. In terms of trash, this thing is super clean compared to the one, the red one back there. I had to throw like four, I think it was four giant contractor bags full of crap out that were in that thing. Uh, this is much, much cleaner, so that's kind of nice. So let's go around the other side and we'll check it out. Ah, 
Oh yeah, look at that. So you put your drink right there. There is like nothing in there except for the old shift pattern, which is kind of cool. Um, back in there. Uh, fuse box, which I don't have in mine. I'm actually having mine rebuilt right now. Um, <laughs> this is kind of cute. I just use some foil like you do. Um, really nice um, really nice dash actually. The whole dash is really is, is in really good shape. And the, the color is really cool too. Mine is all gray. This is like a like a gold color. All of the appointments in here are gold, which is really cool. I mean, I was toying with the idea of taking that steering wheel and putting it in mine because it's a beautiful steering wheel. And it's actually in one piece. There are no cracks in that steering wheel at all. Mine is really pretty cracked. Um, so I might wind up in the Frankenstein for a travel wall. We'll have to see. Uh, I've only been in back once to check out the rear panels. Actually, I'll crawl in there now. Um, I'm going to have to pry this door open. What I'm going to do is turn this off, throw some PB blaster on it, and uh, see if I can get that door to open a little bit easier before I go jamming it. And then uh, I'll check back in. So here we are looking at the back. I just shot this with some PB blaster. This door does not want to open. It's probably been sitting for centuries and just is tired. One thing I forgot to mention up front is this has the really nice aluminum um, step plates that mine doesn't have. Um, if I can get those out in one piece, that'd be really cool. It's got carpet and it's got some uh, seat belts. I don't see, yeah, there's still lap belts. There's 67. But those would be worth grabbing. Um, but I'm going to try to get these out because that would be a really nice addition to mine. Um, the rear of this thing is in decent shape. Looks a little different than mine. The biggest thing that I see that's different is this, this piece here. This is like a box that's, I guess, hollow underneath. Mine came with a, uh, a cage, it was like a tube cage that basically was bolted in and then the seat bolted to that. So I built, uh, in one of my other videos, I built a uh, lockable case for this thing. Um, I'm going to have to get in here and see what's underneath this. I bet there's probably like hidden treasures under there, uh, junk and mice nests and crap. Um, it's got the um, seat catches. Mine never was drilled for seat catches. I don't think there was ever a seat in mine because it was mine was built as a uh, fire truck of some kind or a fire support truck of some kind. So uh, it probably never came with a, a rear seat. And uh, I'm having a seat built for it, so I'm going to put a seat in. So I, I need to take measurements and figure out where these go. Um, ratty armrests. Um, this rear seat looks like it's pretty well damaged. I can see through it. But it looks like it's got some pretty good hardware. So I'll have to yank that out and uh, put a mask on and take it apart and see what it's like. Um, part of the roof is between the seats. Here's another piece of the roof that's still sort of semi hooked up so I'll have to disconnect that. It's got a good dome light surround there which is cool. I'll save that. Let's climb into the back here. Uh, or if any sort of disease and see what we have back here. This is the other piece I was talking about, the outside um, molding that goes on the driver's side. It was torn off when they were towing this thing out of somebody's backyard, so it's pretty well trashed, which is kind of a drag. Um, so we'll put that aside. You see here, this is where water was getting in for years in this thing, so I think it probably ran down in here and sat in this bin, and it's been rusting through that bin ever since. Um, this is, as far as I can tell, this bin is not factory. This is some sort of aftermarket toolbox that somebody put in at some point, um, which is, you know, kind of clever when you think about it. Um, probably was pretty trick back in its time. Um, hard to tell where it came from or, you know, somebody's uh, washers or sheet metal screws or something. I don't know. Um, the back door, I've got to look into and figure out how to get this down so then I can use this catch to get the whole thing open and drop the back. I think probably what I'll wind up having to do is unscrew the whole rear of it. I've got a a 12 volt um, um, battery packer, you know, a 12 volt transformer I can put on the motor in the rare chance that the motor works and runs the window down. I can get the window down, but if not, to figure something else out because I'm going to wind up storing the 
crappy tires and pretty much all the garbage that I don't save in this thing are going right where I'm standing right now. This from what I am told is an arctic heating unit. Um, there are two cooling lines that run under the truck and up to the front that come back here that send um, coolant all the way back here and apparently there's a blower underneath this thing that blows hot air out into the back which is also pretty cool. Uh, this is where the spare tug used to go clearly but um, I'll see if I can get that out and if anybody's interested in it because that might be cool for somebody to have. Uh, funny to see they used the same switch in here that they did in the Scout ten years later, um, which is what came in my Scout. So yeah, that's pretty much the basic tour of this thing. You can see the front windshield is cracked. All the other glass is in good shape. Um, so these doors and the glass are all coming with me. So yeah, I think probably the next order of business is to mask up and start pulling stuff out of this thing. i got to see if I can get that door open and uh, I can just use that door to haul the bench out of. And we'll, uh, we'll see what's underneath all this stuff. So I got a big old trash bag and started filling it with stuff. Pulled the rear seat out, which was pretty easy. It wasn't connected to anything. And just started grabbing handfuls of carpet and garbage and yuck from the back and throwing them in the bag. Anything I could find that I wasn't going to keep. Um, actually pretty shocked at how much went into the bag. Uh, the carpet came up really easy. It just basically disintegrated in my hands. I only had to get a utility knife for a couple parts of it, but um, it, it wanted to come out of there. One half had that uh, undercoating or that under padding and the other half didn't. Um, and it looked like it had been trapping moisture for a good long time. There was a, a lot of uh, damage to the floors that I'll show in a minute. Uh, after I vacuumed it, I was actually kind of shocked at how much rust was in there and how many giant flakes of metal I was picking up. I was just picking up handfuls of them here and there. It was kind of crazy. All right, so here's the damage in back. At first I thought it was coming off pretty clean, but as you can see, there's a lot of surface rust. The paint over there is flaking off in weird ways that I've never seen before. It's like almost like somebody poured paint thinner on it or something and it's taking up the paint, the primer, and a layer of steel. Weird. Um, mine is in much better shape than this. My, my rear floor, just the rear floor, is in much better shape than this. Um, I'm going to move up front and see what the front floor looks like. I'll throw the bench seat back in here, and then that's going to tell us really what we need to know about the future of this truck. And as you might imagine, this was not glamorous. Just handfuls and handfuls of metal I was pulling out of this thing. Um, and as I was pulling on it, I was finding that none of it was connected to the floor, and big holes started appearing. All right, so... If you ask me what Pennsylvania rough is, this is Pennsylvania rough. So this is the area under the front seat. Um, this is the gas tank. That's the driver's side gas tank. That's the floor. That's the ground over there. Uh, I have no f idea how far back under the seat it goes. My guess is that it goes pretty far. Probably what was happening was water was coming down here and just pooling here and it just eventually went down through there. Um, when I can get a better light on this thing tomorrow, I'm going to look at the the um, cowl vent and see if I can see anything. I'm also going to put a borescope down and we'll see if we can see what's left of that. My prediction is not much. Um, the passenger seat is only a little better. Uh, and you can see you can see some some ground down through there. Um, so yeah, this this would be a builder for sure, but not a you know immediate runner. My floor is not perfect, but it's much better than this is. Um, I'll have to do a compare and contrast later. But yeah, that's that's what we're looking at here. So um, I knew full well what this was when I got it. Uh, so here's starting work on the following day. Um, I 
sprayed as much as I could down with PB Blaster. And then while that was curing, um, started working on stuff like trim, small outdoor things. Here I'm looking at the sill plate on the driver's side. When this was done, I switched to the rear door on that same side and worked on this one. It took time, as all this stuff does. Uh, I had to drill bolts out on both of these and on the other side as well when I got to those. So here I started taking the headlights and the marker lights off of the front in preparation for getting the front fenders off. These were rusted in, so this took a whole lot of time and a whole lot of PB blaster and a drill and a cutoff wheel and a hammer and a screwdriver. Lots of stuff. I actually wound up having to spray these with more PB blaster and letting them sit for a while, so then I went back to other dumb stuff. Um, I think I was scoping out what the other bolts looked like here. The top ones come off really easy, but the one to inside are just a pain in the butt. And uh, I got as many of those as I could. I think here I finally got the headlight bucket out and the marker light off. All right, so here we are Saturday morning, working on getting the first parts off the truck. Um, taking small stuff from the outside right now, I've gotten the trim off. I'm about to take this off. I've gotten the kick plates out. I've gotten some of the small stuff out. I've hit a whole bunch of stuff with PB Blaster uh, because I'm trying to get the big stuff off so I can get the small stuff off inside. Um, the fenders are a bitch because there's all sorts of bolts up here and around here that I gotta get off. Um, I've got all the ones inside here down, but there's a bunch that go here that have to come off from inside. And there's a whole bunch of gas tank stuff in the way right up here. So I gotta navigate that stuff. Uh, starting to build a very small pile here. And I'm just trying to basically slow down because I'm sort of grabbing everything as I see it instead of being slow and methodical about it. I actually started unbolting this door completely and I realized I need to bolt it back on and leave it in place until I'm ready to take the doors off. The doors will probably be one of the last things, the doors in the glass. So uh, yeah, gotta just slow myself down and be smart about what I'm doing. So here I'm pulling the roof rack off. Um, it was snagging on the car cover and I wanted to make sure I didn't put any holes in that. Um, and I do want to save this. It's really cool. It looks really great. So I was very careful to get that off. And then there's a luggage rack that goes underneath that. That took a little bit of time to get off. Um, and so once those came off, the roof is smooth, but now there's a bunch of holes in it. Here I'm just taking the trim off of the passenger side. Real simple stuff. Not that hard to get off, but in fantastic shape. I was really shocked. The other really cool thing was that all of the little plastic clips that hold this thing on were in really excellent shape too. I figured they were going to be just destroyed, but they all came off and they're all almost intact. After a liberal soak of PB Blaster and some time to sit, I finally got back to the taillights and started pulling those out. And once I got the lenses off, I was really shocked to find that they were in fantastic shape, better than any of the lights I've seen, better than the lights that I got in my truck. Wow, that's in beautiful shape. That's like better than anything I've got. I wonder what the other one looks like. Over on the passenger side, it was the same story. Um, going by the condition of the chrome in these things, I figured that everything was going to just be trashed, but uh, it looked like nothing had ever gotten in there. The, the cork seals had held really well. There was no rust, rust there was no rot. It was really amazing. Um, both of the wires were gone. They were chewed off or something. I'm not sure what. So taillights hadn't been working in a long time, but the buckets themselves are great. So I'll definitely swap those into my truck. I'll wait for the bulb. The bulb came undone. Hanging down here somewhere. An attempt was made to get into the back and try to get the panel off the back door so I could maybe try to get the window down, but I did not have success. I'm going to need a much thicker and heavier duty screwdriver. At this point, I went to the rear of the 
passenger side and started pulling off the sill plate by the door here. I think I only had to drill out one bolt, which was nice. Um, came out relatively smooth. Extra time with PV Blaster really helped this side completely, I think. And then I moved up to the front door and pulled this one out. This one, I think I had to drill out two bolts, but I think it might've been here that my half full can of PV Blaster stopped working. I don't know if anybody else has experienced this, but I couldn't get anything to come out and there's still a whole bunch left in there. I'm pretty frustrated with that because I bought gallons of this stuff over the years. And because I couldn't help myself, I wanted to see what these things looked like if I put them on my truck. So I pulled the cover off and test fit them in there. And man, that's pretty. That looks really good, I think. If I had been smarter, I would have moved the tripod out of the way because that's kind of right in the way. But that's going to look really nice. The thing I've got to decide now is how I'm going to actually hook these onto the truck. I think I'll probably use some sort of sticky tape or glue because I really don't want to drill into the sheet metal. I'm afraid of water getting down there and then getting into the sill and rusting that out and I just don't want to do that. This is what you have to do to get a driver's front fender off of a C-Series truck. There are, count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts in the front, one, two, three, four, five, six bolts on the top, two on the cowl, one, two, three on the inside. These bolts are not bad. These bolts suck. These bolts really suck. These four here. These two, mm, in the middle somewhere. Um, I'm working on these three now. What I've basically got to do is get in here and behind the driver's um, there's the driver's side gas tank. This is the overflow tube and like way in the back, back in there are the three bolts that I've got to get to. And that's going to be not fun just to get the stupid fender off. Once I did get those three bolts on the firewall off, this thing came off really smoothly. Um, I just had to chisel out the old fuel hose that was coming through that port on the front there that you see. But once I got that out of the way, it popped right off. Okay, so the driver's fender is off. You can get a better look underneath things and see what we got going on here. Power steering unit. That's a really impressive suspension. I wish I would was able to save it or unbolt it and put it on mine, but that would just be way too much work. I've got the solid I-beam front axle on mine, not the independent suspension. Um, I also have no idea what the brakes are like on this, if they are the Lockheed brakes or the ones that are really hard to get parts for or what. I'm just basically going off what I've got. But this is the driver's um, gas fill um, and the overflow valve. Um, I was able to get the headlight out. I was able to get the... Um, I still haven't gotten the, the marker light out here. This is just rusted all the way through, so I'm gonna probably drill this out next. Um, I wanna get this out. Actually, I'm gonna pull the radiator out of this thing, drain it and pull it out so I can get behind, pull this off. That'll help me get to all of the bolts on the inside of this to get the cowl off of the inner fenders. Um, I'm gonna try to take the inner fenders as well because they are good. Um, on both sides, and I definitely want to save those, um, and that'll help me get to the power steering to get all of this stuff off in one piece. But that's where we're at right now, so I'm going to try to get this off next, and uh, I'll go over to the other side, start soaking the bolts over there. This took about two hours to get off. It was a bit much, it's, and it's because of these bolts I mentioned earlier. They're just super hard to get to, um, so I'll try to start getting those off today. I'm going to rehang this, rehang the fender back on here just for giggles, um, just to keep this thing looking like it's in one piece until I'm really ready to take the whole thing apart. It occurs to me I should take a look at the underside of this. It's been undercoated a bunch of times. It's like really super thick. You can see here under the fill, there's none here. And this is where they all rust, right here. Um, 
so I don't know I, I might uh, toy with the idea of drilling out the spot welds on this piece here to see if I can get this out in one piece patch this panel up and then keep it um, because the rest of it is in really good shape like this all of this metal is in fantastic shape in some respects it's better than the stuff that I've got this is all really good all of this it's just this area down here so and then this is in one piece as well so I'm hoping that the passenger fender is in similar shape all right let me show you something funny here look at all of the dirt that got trapped in this fender I mean it just keeps going down and down I'm, I think I'm inside the pocket where the fender or the, the marker light is supposed to go um, this marker is just trashed you can probably see it there I'm gonna vacuum this stuff out but yeah it's this is just that's that's wild that's crazy all right uh, wrapping up the first day of stripping this thing down doesn't look like I got much done but I actually spent some serious time on it um, as I showed before this fender is ready to come off this one's about halfway ready I've got to get all these troublesome bolts underneath there and then the two there's one that's out here but this one and that one are being really tough and I got to get those out too um, haven't messed with the engine at all. Um, I got a lot of trim and other small stuff off. Um, it's always funny, you think you're gonna get a whole bunch done and then, you know, everything takes time. Um, so it's definitely gonna take a lot of time to get this thing stripped down to the point where it's ready to go. But I think I've made some pretty good progress so far. Um, I still can't get the rear hatch down. And like I said before, that's gonna be hopefully where a lot of the junk goes up until this thing leaves, uh, so I've got to I got to get that sorted out. I need larger bolts, really, is what the or a larger uh, screwdriver with a really clean head to get those bolts along the bottom of the door out. I did remount this door. It's not in perfectly, but it's going to do for now. Um, and then you know, with the uh, the cover, that should be fine until this thing is good to go. I also took the rack off. It's sitting over behind the other travel wall, um, just so I can get the cover on it and it doesn't kill the cover. I'm going to brush all that stuff off. Um, some of the interior furnishings are out, but I'm going to have to spend probably a day on nothing but the dashboard and just work on getting the wheel and the dashboard out. Uh, I'll probably take the hardware off the doors, but I'm going to leave the door cards on. Um, they're clipped on, so I'll just leave those for now. That's fine. I'm going to get all this nice trim stuff out of here. The cowl up across the top, I'm definitely taking, you know, the whole dashboard's coming with me. Um, and then under the hood, what I need is I need a really good can of PP Blaster. Mine died on me. I've got to soak pretty much everything on this side of the engine down. I'm going to take the radiator out and um, I'll probably take the fan off. You know, I, one thing I haven't tried, yeah, I can't move this engine at all. I can't, I can't move this fan blade at all. I haven't tried putting anything on the crank. I'll probably do that once I get the um, radiator out and I'll try putting a bolt on the crank and see if I can turn it, but I will bet you just based on the condition of this thing, any amount of money that I would have to soak it really good and really long to get it to do anything. Um, the other thing, I need more PP Blaster. I gotta take the cowl off there so I can pull that up and then I wanna put a bore scope down and see what the, the vents look like. Actually, let's, let me get a light here really quick on the table. Let's just, for giggles. Let's see if I can see. I haven't even looked up here yet, but I'm kind of curious now that I'm talking about it to see what this looks like. All right, so here's under the dash. You can see somebody stuffed rags up into there. There's the cowl vent. Yep. All right, so I'll try to get this under. See all that rust around the edges there? That's all the stuff that I had to cut out on mine, and I can see, you can see it behind this thing, but behind the cowl vent there, up around the firewall, it's pretty bad. 
I'll know more once I pull the dash off. Um, you know, just how bad it is. I'm going to take as much of the running gear out of this thing as I can. I'll probably try to get the the pedal assembly out and you know everything I can out of here. One thing I was looking for, somebody told me to look for, was the switch for the rear the rear light or the, the excuse me the rear window, and I haven't looked for that yet. Um, I don't see a switch anywhere for that. Might be. Could be this guy. There's a rocker switch there that doesn't feel like it wants to move, actually at all. Lights. Oh, vent. Oh, yeah. All right, so I just opened that vent, and you heard how much stuff fell out of there. So, yep, yeah, that's a pretty good indication. Um, this is fuel tank. That's the ashtray. I don't see any other anything else for the light here, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll look around some more and see. Or excuse me, I keep saying light. I mean tailgate. Um, it's probably that. Oh, it's yeah, it's probably this rocker. Now it's coming forward. So maybe if I'm feeling really daring, I'll put a battery on this thing and see if that actually even works. If I can't get those. Uh, screws off out back, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, yeah, so that's where we are. I'll probably get that cover off, too. And, uh, as much of this as I can. All right. So that's where we stand. Saturday night. Pretty good night. If you've made it this far in the video, you're probably still pretty interested in travel walls. To keep this thing going, I've got a storefront up at threadless.com. There are all sorts of designs there, travel walls, travelettes, scouts, and other designs. I'll put a link in the description. Thanks for watching.